I'm out already. <laughs> Just right. Go a little left. There we go. Knock down. Butamus. Butamus. Is he down? He's down. He's back right. up again. He's back up. That was right. He's coming right there. I am here with SF legend Rick Lamb. Rick, thanks for coming out. Thanks we are invite. gonna go over some of my favorite blasters ever. Legitimately, dude, you are, you are one of those guys that I hold very high uh, up on the list of uh, American icons, literally. Um, but the other cool part is you gotta have everybody's gotta have a hobby. Your hobby is collecting cool shit. <laughs> you have got. It's an uh, addiction, actually. Yeah. We, uh, and you can go back to our video archive and you can find them. Rick has brought us, uh, what was it, uh, 1916 or something 1916, like that. yeah. 1916 uniforms. We, we've done uniforms and equipment. And it's a great series of videos all the way. World War One, World War II, um, Korean War, Vietnam, everything. All the way up through the Battle of Mogadishu where you got shot through the forehead, which is just hilarious. <laughs> This guy's a trip. It wasn't funny at the time. Uh, <laughs> In retrospect, it was. It's always funny. It's always funny. Oh, that was so tragic. How can you laugh? I'm like, because combat is funny. It's funny. It's funny. You got, you got to laugh about it. Um, but seriously, though, um, there were a couple things we wanted to cover in yes. the World War I, World War II era videos. And you didn't have uh, everything. You weren't comfortable doing it at the time. So he promised me he would come back and go over some of my favorites including this one right here, the B-A-R. Um, where do you want to start with it? Where do you want to start? Uh, it, with John Moses Browning. I mean, uh, he was probably the, the genius of our time. You yeah. Know, the, uh, I mean, everything from the 1911 to, to you name it. So, uh, so the B-A-R starts in World War I. And, uh, and see, I didn't know that because yeah. the only time I've ever seen them are World War II movies. Exactly. Okay. And, uh, and, and it goes through some changes over the years. But uh, you got to remember that uh, you know, Black Jack Pershing, 1916, you know, right after the, uh, the raid in, in Texas, you know, he chases Pancho Villa all the way down into Mexico. And he stays down there for almost a year. And that was a change in the U.S. military at the time because that was the first time we used airplanes. It was the first time that we used, you know, armored cars. Mm -hmm. It was the first time okay. that we had mobility. Uh, we had uh, we had communications. So it, it, if you look at it, it was the the emergence of the fine fix finish okay. that uh, that you know you guys perfected uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan. So so the uh, so Pershing comes back from um, chasing Pancho Villa, and he's got all these new technologies, and uh, but he's what in his mind is he sees a war of movement. And so when we get uh, geared up, they sink the Lusitania, we, we declare a war on Germany, now we send the American Expeditionary Forces to Europe. Well, the, uh, the, the, the Brits and the French, they just said, give us the troops, we'll put them in the trenches, and uh, you know, they just wanted bodies. And yeah. Pershing said, no, I'm going to keep the Americans as their own force, and we will fight a decisive battle, but I'm not going to piecemeal uh, my guys into this meat grinder. And again, in the back of his head, he's thinking war of movement. movement. So, so he's already got John Moses Browning working on a couple of things, the BAR being one of them. So uh, the BAR was, uh, for its day, I mean, it was the first automatic rifle that uh, with a magazine, 20 round box clip and uh, heavy. I mean, that thing is, uh, it weighs a ton. Back then, everybody was running bolt action rifles. Everyone was yep. running bolt action rifles. All right, so this literally goes all the way back to uh, Pershing, or basically our head general at the time, hitting up Browning. Browning was working on machine Correct. guns. Yeah, Browning's working on machine guns. So the, uh, the old 1917, uh, you can remember the Germans had the Vickers, and yeah. that, that's what was just decimating the guys on the battlefield. You couldn't even get out of the trenches and across no man's land because of the artillery and the machine guns. So America's working on its own machine gun because we're borrowing stuff from the French. And uh, so that's where you come up with the, uh, the Browning 1917, you know, with the water broom cooled. handle, yeah, yeah. the water-cooled machine gun. That goes into the, that turns into the 1919, which is uh, that they had for the air-cooled, exactly. Uh, so he's working on machine guns, uh, the pistol, the venerable 1911. 1911. The, uh, one, one of my all-time faves in that, uh, I mean, this thing, the, uh, we're in combat uh, against the Moro Indians in the Philippines. And uh, they're all hopped up on Mountain Dew, right? They're, uh, they're, they're using yeah. opi opiates. And uh, so they're, uh, the 38s at the time were not putting them down. So they go to John Moses Brown and he's working this uh, 1911, which for its day, magazine fed again, it's got- uh, Which is a big step up. Oh, exactly. Compared to a revolver. Six rounds and a revolver, you now you got seven. 
uh, Quick Change magazines. Yeah. Now you got seven more. So they went to the yeah. Chicago Stockyards. State of the art. State yeah. of the art in this day. I mean, up, it, we still carry them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, in fact, I remember the, the I, last time I met you in Iraq, you were. I had me a nineteen eleven in Iraq. Yeah, you did, and you were pimping me for uh, fifteen round magazines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, so we've got the so he brings this out for the Moral Indians. Because uh, one forty-five round, and this, these things are about the size of your thumb. They're slow. It's like pushing a golf ball through somebody. It's kind of a traumatic event if you if you're on the receiving end of it. But they wanted they wanted a bullet this size so that anywhere you hit a, a human body, you're going to spin it and drop it, and uh, that's that's where where the forty-five comes from. Uh, they tested it on cadavers. They tested it in the Chicago uh, stockyards. Yeah, you know, all the hanging slabs beef. Of, yeah. Slabs of beef, and uh, and that's what they fielded again in 1911. So that became the standard sidearm. So you fast forward. Now it's uh, it's 1917. We're going into uh, to Europe, into the trenches, and he's in his mind. He's thinking he'd be in Persian War of Movement. I I got I, I don't want to be in the meat grinder. So they start working on the uh, the Thompson submachine gun. And the Thompson submachine gun was initially called the trench broom, and, and, uh, and using the same uh, and, uh, caliber using, exactly as the, yep. using the, the the 45 round, the the 1911 45 automatic Colt pistol, uh, but they couldn't get into production fast enough to actually get into it because what they envisioned was a machine gunner uh, with a drum magazine uh, and and a chest full of uh, about a dozen Mark One hand grenades, you know, okay. the big pineapple hand grenades, and that would be the guy that would fight in the trenches. And uh, he's just sweeping the trench with the trench broom, just, just and he's, and he's fragging down. He's fragging his corners. Every corner, frag corners, right? But in order to get, and then you've got a guy with a shotgun as well, and he's got the got the breastplate of grenades as well. And uh, so they're just they're just in there, and it's just, they're throwing as much lead in those trenches as they can. Once you're in the trenches, but to get you, you to the trenches, get to the trench, you needed yeah. this. And uh, so again, this was the first automatic rifle with a uh, with a box. Fed twenty round box magazine uh, that, that's shooting the thirty odd six. Thirty odd six is yeah. a monster. We're, <laughs> we think of three oh eight as being our big gun now. Same projectile, twice the gunpowder. Oh, exactly, and, yeah. and it is a monster. Uh, so if you go back again to um, to World War One, the uh, this was the uh, the O three Springfield, mm -hmm. which I think we got one laying around here somewhere. But that was uh, that was the gun that uh, right after. Teddy Roosevelt does the charge up San Juan Hill. He comes back and he says the Spanish Mauser kicked our ass. So we start looking at a Mauser action, yeah. and because uh, we were running crags at that time, so that's where the O3 Springfield comes in. Okay. So you had the O3 Springfield cartridge, but it had like a a crag bullet, you know, one of the yeah, rounded, yeah, the rounded nose. nose. Yeah. So in 06, 1906, uh, they they came out with the 30 ot six, which uh, had a Spitzer. Mm. And uh, so this is the round that, uh, that uh, and I, you know, a little factoid too is I always thought it was the 03 Springfield that went to war in yeah. uh, World War I. Not so fast. Because the British got in the war in 1914 and they couldn't make enough Enfields for their, the force that they built to send to Europe. So they asked the, the Americans, could you build us British Enfields in 303? So we start building Enfields in 303. We don't have enough 1903 Springfields to outfit our force going into Europe. And uh, so we retooled the factories in the United States and we built an, a U.S. Enfield in 30-06. And they called it the M1917. So the okay. M1917 <laughs> uh, American Enfield in 30-06 is what we carried in uh, World War One predominantly. Uh, you know, Sergeant York, gobble, 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 and he's out there in the movie. Yeah. It's an, yeah, it's yeah, an yeah. 03 Springfield. In actuality, it was, a, it was a 1917 American Enfield in 30-06. When you go to a lot of uh, the Smithsonian and guys, if you've never been there, uh, understand as a taxpayer, those are your museums. You paid for them. I encourage every American, go to D.C. and see all the museums. But we have uh, museums of our firearms and... Uh, you go there and it just looks like a rack of guns. And to me, it all just kind of flows into a wall of lead and steel and yes. eventually yeah. one you'll spot. But uh, it's these small little uh, tidbits of information that really makes it so awesome to bring somebody with you that knows the history or to actually take the time to walk it with uh, one of the uh, rangers there that can give you the tour. So um, make sure you make the most of those museum visits. Good All point. Right. Um, All right. So in World War One, the uh, again 
trench warfare, warfare movement, get us across the, uh, the, the no man's land. So you've got the- You, you uh, gotta put that on, cause I get, know that's not gonna fit me. You got the BAR belt. And uh, so this one is an actual, it's a, it's a real one. It, uh, it it's was not, never, it's a hundred years old. Yeah, so it, uh, so I don't wear it around the house unless I'm naked. But uh, yeah, as you notice, the, the difference between- You wear this around the house, yeah, Oh yeah, of yeah. course I do. <laughs> and my wife thinks I'm a nutbag, okay. So now what, what you'll see with this, this is the gunner's belt. So he's got two 45 magazines. For his sidearm. Uh, for his sidearm, because okay. he's gonna run a, a leather holster right. and, a, and a sidearm. And uh, then he's got, uh, he's got three 20 round magazine pouches here. So, Tac so, mag so reload, two, speed two, reload. Four, so six, yep. six magazines six here. Six mags there. Another uh, eight right here with, with one in the pipe, so for nine. So he's got nine Nine, nine 20 round mags of 30 odd six. Now yeah, I know- he's, he's also got what is an that? AG, an assistant gunner. An assistant who, gunner. He doesn't have one of these, but he's got an additional pouch. Okay. So he's running two additional magazines. Plus What's he's got his bandoliers. In his hand um, is, uh, is probably a 1917 okay. or, a, right. uh, or an 03 Springfield. Okay. And, uh, but he's running two bandoliers, six magazines here, six mag. They had a left and a right. So he's running what, uh, two, four, six, he's running 12. He's he was a 20. private. Oh yeah. Because only privates do, would carry stupid stuff. And there was like a third that. guy <laughs> running similar loads. So it's a three man BAR team. And uh, they're, they're carrying 30, 30, you know, 24 to 36 magazines. And, uh, wow. and they're moving across no man's land. And so what this was for, and this is a, this is a newer version. So I can't get it into the cup, but the, the original version here didn't have this um, this shoulder piece. And then we'll, we'll cover about why yeah. they added that in World War II. Well, so literally they would just... You sling the weapon and, uh, and then you put it into the cup and then you are going across no man's land and it's called walking fire. So every time your left foot hits the ground, you're pulling trigger. So semi-auto. Semi-auto. Once you get into the trench, you take it out of the cup you shoulder it, you put it on auto, and you start sweeping the trench. You, the grenadiers, the shotgun man, and the, uh, the, guys and the Thompson with, gunner. With the guy with yeah. the, the trench burn. Exactly. The Thompson. And that's, uh, that's, that was the BAR in World War I. Get us, get us across no man's land, get us into the trench, and then sweep that trench. Guys, um, the weight of this thing, think, think wood, all right? And um, steel. It's heavy. Think heavy barrel because it's gonna it's got to handle a lot of uh, it's got to handle a lot of heat and um, just the action alone. And by the way, this is not five five six. This puppy's not three oh eight. It is thirty odd six. Uh, unfortunately, two gunners. By the time you got across from one trench to the other, it was probably in the hands of one of the other guys. I would because imagine the gunner yeah. was down. Yep, yep. Just think of the 20 round box magazines you're going over through. Over and, that and as well. over and over again, man. Right uh, now, with you holding that though, the, uh, the, the, you fast forward to World War II. Yeah. So you got these in, in the inventory. They were initially trench brooms, right? Trench sweepers. Yeah. And they look at them and they I'll say, tell you, you what, know, this. Before we do World War II, yeah. Because right, this is the cool part, guys. This is my favorite part of this gun right here. Before we get to that, let's let uh, YouTube slap you right in the face with a commercial. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. You enjoy that commercial? I enjoy I, that I enjoy commercial. the commercial, yeah. I, I, don't, I, remember I don't remember what it was what because it was. I always yeah, yeah. click through it. No, <laughs> it's all right. Um, when we left, we were wrapping up World War One, and um, at, by the end of World War One, everybody realized, look, those tactics literally do not work anymore. We cannot do that anymore. Fast forward, and uh, the Germans came in with uh, the Blitzkrieg was literally... Yes. massive quick movement with mobile troops uh, and that immediately made us change our tactics correct yeah and Which, that's where you start get, getting into uh, airland battle doctrine your squads as uh, as actually movement instead of linear formations mm -hmm. you know they're now bounding overwatch yeah. traveling overwatch some of the stuff that we you we, you want to hit on day. that because that yes. uh this gun fell into that and then uh the tactics actually made them change this again Correct. Right. Yeah. So this this becomes now the uh, one of the workhorses of the uh, the rifle squad, and so the rifle squad is uh, twelve men. Yep. And uh, consists of a squad leader who's a staff sergeant, and he's got five men. 
tour scouts. And so you know, we our entire career, we always heard scouts out, scouts that's out. That's the term, well, scouts that's, out. That's where it came from. So I didn't scouts out, that. bam. Yeah. Scouts are out front, and they're actually they're actually you know sneaking, pooping, and they're uh, they're going to make contact first. The the third guy in that uh, in that formation is the squad leader because he's the senior man. And uh, so when the scouts make contact, they go down, they start uh, returning fire. The squad leader assesses the situation like squad leaders do, and then he brings up the BAR team. Which is that, the it's, other it's, three guys The other three him. guys, yep. Right. So, it's the, so it's the gunner, the assistant gunner, and the ammo bearer. Now, if I'm down shooting, it would suck holding this up. Correct. It so would. one of, the, one of the, big, uh, the big things that this, so now, now it becomes... In the Overwatch, it becomes a uh, support by fire. Support you know? by fire. And uh, so, so they've they've changed it from a from an assault weapon to a, uh, a support by fire weapon, and that that really gives the uh, that gives the the rifle squad now the ability to maneuver, mm. to suppress targets and maneuver. Don't lose it. Don't oh, lose my yeah. stuff. All right. Maybe that so, was just one of those voices again. I don't know. That's the little voice in your head. <laughs> All so, right. And if you look at this bipod, very cumbersome. I mean, the uh, so I, I see pictures of the guys without the bipod. Well, yeah. Can you imagine doing what I just did under fire? Or, or yeah, so, I think I would. Uh, so it's, it's one of those things that the gunner, he's got to be, get used to his gun, and he's got to be, uh, because trying to get this thing now to go back, you know, you got to do that. Do the, I mean, the, the, you know, the stuff we have now is yeah. so much easier. So much faster. But, uh, so but much literally, faster. this was the, one of the first bipods. One so, of the first uh, bipods, exactly. And I, you see the same thing on the 1919 A6. So you got a bipod, late, probably 45. They put a carrying handle on it because uh, when they do start bounding, he can jump up next exactly, to the gun and grab grabbing, it. Because grabbing this anywhere where that thing is hot yeah, is going to scald your hand. Yep. So they actually put a uh, put a uh, handle would go right handle there. On it. We'll go ahead and mount right. that later. And, uh, okay. But now and then, if you look at the back, you've got. Uh, Add it on the back. I'm gonna slide it forward so I can keep it in frame here. Uh, on the back plate, this would stand up. Then that, what that did was it allowed you to keep it up on your shoulder while you're laying. It would actually sit right on top of your shoulder, yeah, just like that. It doesn't slip down, slip under yeah. your arm, because the kick on this thing is, uh, is is pretty substantial. Kick, yes. And All so, right. So now you've got the the three man BAR team. And, We're just uh, laying down some laying lead. down some lead along gunning. with the along with the two scouts and the and the squad leader, and then the assistant squad leader had five riflemen that he would then maneuver. Bravo team and uh, right. the Bravo team. So uh, what what they found was that this thing was putting out so much firepower that it was hard to disengage this weapon with the other five riflemen putting out firepower in order to bound him forward. All right. So then that's uh, late by late war, you see two of these in a squad. So, so then you have one in each fire one team. One in each fire team. And then that's and those fire teams we stepped into, yeah, which had a grenadier. Then you, you had start a adding rifle grenadiers, riflemen. yeah. Uh, guys, so literally, you start looking at modern uh, TONE and stuff, how we set up our uh, Fire teams in our squads, we're used to seeing, at least I, the way I grew up, is you'd have a, a SAW M249 squad automatic weapon in each fire team, an M203 40 millimeter grenade launcher, and uh, and then Alpha team leader, Bravo team leader, squad leader, and uh, literally, and you start adding designated marksmen now with scope guns and everything yeah. else, and there's so many great tools these things continue to evolve because of uh tactics being used by the enemy and just uh the technological advances right now each squad has drones literally hand, handheld mm -hmm. yeah. uh uavs so uh, you don't need to do scouts out so much per se but yeah, yeah the sights uh, on these they were, they were probably woo. over sighted and that uh you, know, you can you can actually do the graduations yeah. to get you uh, get you out there's also a little a little uh, peep sight here for uh, you know, for the quick quick fire that you're putting down range, and uh, good good gun. I mean, this this stayed with us from probably uh, what 1918 all the way up through Vietnam. We we actually gave some of these to our indige, if you can imagine that. Uh, the little and, and, uh, uh, you know, M1 Garand, the little brown guys through running foreign military sales. This. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> here, Ham Chuck, this one's for you. And actually, we we zeroed four of these in Panama for just cause. And uh, we had them in the arms room because a lot of the foreign military sales went down to Latin America. 
So we uh, there were some missions that uh, Charlie Company was tasked to do where we would need um, we would need machine guns you know, to, uh, for for Overwatch. Yep. And uh, we didn't have enough. Uh, we had M60E3s. I think we had a couple old Mag 58s. We had some regular M60s, and so they actually zeroed four of these uh, just in, in the event we had. Yeah, to put them it gives in you. Uh, yeah. Why would you not do it? True. Um, all right. Uh, I noticed the web gear changed. Web gear changes. Yeah, this Two this is now D. the uh, the ammo bearer belt okay. is the standard issue. And uh, so you, you're running now uh, at two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve magazines, Plus one in thirteen, the gun, in, the, 13. In, the, in the pipe. See, so you got uh, a frag on here. I'll tell you what. Let's put this yeah. one on too. I, I notice you don't have your holster hanging off of it because you don't have spare holsters. But well, uh, and actually they, they they quit using. You're putting it on or me? On you. Yeah. Oh man, I'm so wearing this out in the snow man. today. It's gonna be awesome. All right now, if, if you if you look at the uh, this harness. A little looser on me it, than it, it is on you. This is the actual, <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> this is the actual, this is the actual harness from a uh, from an aid bag. So the uh, the medic would carry uh, would carry this harness, and then he'd have a series of bags around him. Mom, I need you and, to dress uh, me here. There you go, right there. You there got we go. It. I got Bam. it. I got it. And uh, so again, just like us, you know, nothing on the on the firing shoulder. Yeah, because that's uh, where I, I, need, frag I need to be able to mount my gun. All right. Oh, that would suck. That's a lot of weight <laughs> that right there. That is a there. lot of weight. That's a lot of <laughs> that weight. That is a bunch of weight. Mm. Okay. And, 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 you, and, and I mean, if you've ever looked at World War II uniforms, they weren't big guys. I mean, a lot of the World War II yeah. uniforms that I come across, I can't get in because we're just bigger, beefier men these days. Better diets. Better diets, exactly. Yeah, no, there, and, there's uh, truth to that. There yeah. really is. There really but, is. Uh, but that's the standard issue there. The, uh, they, they quit carrying uh, 1911s. Um, but you can. I mean, it's, it's, it's a web belt, so you can oh, so they actually, um, they quit carrying 19, I guess I, we don't give 19, 11, 19, we don't give sidearms to our saw gunners. Yeah. You know, so it makes sense. Okay. And, uh, and, and that's pretty much the rig there. The, uh, no, you, no need for a bayonet. Uh, so yeah. again, I see, I see pictures out there of, of the guys who, who actually stole the, or, or not stole, but. Acquired. Acquired from the from the medics. You don't steal from carrying all that weight. It was that just easier wrong. on your shoulders. Yeah, no, yeah. The wider straps, yeah. uh, and then you know you got guys customizing their gear. And true, if you find something that actually works, people will adapt it. That, yeah. Which is you know that's how innovation's done. All right. Um, we want to go from here. This thing is so awesome. We got to go to the range. We got to go. We got to go to the range. Go to the yeah. range. I, I, actually, this will be the first time I fired it too. So uh, Ooh, then so. you pull, you shoot it first. So if yeah. it blows up, it's you. I, I'm the medic, dude. I gotta treat him. I gotta treat him. All right. Um, you want to get Thompson too, or yeah, let's uh, let's go with Grand. Uh, we could cover the M1 Grand uh, with the rifle grenade because that was okay. that was actually nice. an additional around uh, 1943 nice. that. Uh, it gave us the grenadiers of today. All right, before we get to the M1 Garand, he even brought the rifle grenades for me. That's so cool. Uh, let's take this puppy out to the range. All right, I'm out here with Rick Lamb. Uh, we're doing our reenactment of the Battle of the Bulls. Dude, yes. And snow, it's cold. But uh, the cool part about a lot of these old guns like this, uh, the weather didn't bother them. This thing will rock, uh, we're hoping. Yes, we're you hoping. Got, you don't have this, a lot of rounds. So this, this is a tactical cool. rifleman first. Again, this is a brand new gun. Brand so uh, new. she's just oiled up and uh, ready to rock. I'll tell you what, man, this is yours. I'll let you uh, tear it up first. He's got a fresh 20 round mag. That's the biggest mags they had. I think I don't think they had yeah. any other sizes, no, did nope, they? that was it. 20 yeah. round mags. Uh, we do have it set up with the bipod. We're shooting uh, what we call our maneuver steer out here. We're not on the flat range, so what he's got out to our front is just a bunch of our steel uh, targets. He's got a couple uh, C-zone steel to plink at, but uh, we're not out here to shoot shot groups. We're out here to do exactly. walking this, fire. And, this is uh, this is in the uh, this is the Overwatch mode for fire maneuver for bounding overwatch. So uh, in gonna, this scenario, we'd, we'd be down, putting down a base of fire while the other fire while team that moves. Yep. So you're keeping the heads down. Yep, yep, maybe the maybe that Bravo team chucks a couple grenades out there to keep them down, hopefully further than the grenades. Uh, they got better <laughs> blanks than we had. And uh, and then we're keeping their heads down. All right, let's do it. All right, All right select the lever is on the right uh, left side of the gun, just like most of our guns. However, the charging handle on this thing is also on the left-hand side. A lot of people aren't used to that. Pulls it back, and uh, we're ready to rock. No pistol we grip on this puppy. Got it on fire. All right, I'm gonna try the blade sight first. All right. Good, damn, first round hit, perfect. 
You got a jam already. Drop the mag. Are right, you good? Yeah. And let it go forward. Oh, no, we got two. You grab another one. You're going to get a double feed. I'm going to let my gunner work through this. I was going to spot for you, dude. All right. Pull that mag. That part where you said you lubed it up, did you actually lube it up? <laughs> <laughs> well, these are all new mags, too. It's a new gun, new mags, new, uh, new gunner. All right, press check. Center mass. Nice. You just killed oh, my he's down. There. That's that's him again. He he's still moving. Just take the little skinny right next to him. There you go. All right, too far. That side, that side. Which? The shift. I don't see a skinny over there. Just to the left of that, where that last target was. See that little white dot? That's a knockdown piece of steel, believe it or not. Don't see it. Old eyes. Yeah, no, well, how'd you hit it with the first shot? Holy cow, high. Just right, just right. Go a little left. A little left. There we go, knocked down. Butamus, butamus. Is he down? He's down. He's back right. up again, he's back up. That was right. I mean, that was left. Go to the right a little bit. All right, that's the part where you reload. Reload. Not bad. I like it. Let's see that speed reload. Come on, what are you doing, Sergeant? Back on the gun. <laughs> I thought you wanted to play. No, brother, I want right. to see the speed reload. You're demonstrating all of our viewers out there. Back in the fight, back in the fight. Back in the all fight, right, let's do it, let's do it. Empty mags. Work it, work it, work. Come on, Ranger, what are you doing? Back in the fight. See, I'm not used to it. There we go, press check, we're in. <laughs> I'm just playing AG here. Oh, that was beautiful. Nice, a little left, a little left. The hit again. That eyes my ass. That's awesome, dude. That is awesome. No joke. One more press for me. She's clear. All right, this, this part where I invite you to slide over. Can I get a couple mags from you? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> These are 10 rounders, so. Uh... All right. Man, Can we turn them into twenties? Finger in that thing. Can we turn them into twenties? Uh, I'm, you got any twenties left? No, I can put. Uh, no, no, no. We're good. We're good. Ten and ten. All right. I'm out already. <laughs> All right, hey guys, I hope you got a kick out of that. This thing, I know you didn't get the kick out of it as much as I did. This thing recoils like a son of a gun. Holy cow. Um, it's an awesome gun. Rick, I want to uh, thank you for bringing Easy. it out. Easy day. Uh, you've seen our other videos we've done with him, but if you haven't, I encourage you to go back through our video archive and pull up all the other great videos that we've done with... Uh, Command Sergeant Major Rick Lamb, total us, wealth of knowledge. And let us know what videos you want to see. Yeah, please. Uh, any, uh, he has got a uh, pretty well unlimited access to some great historic weapons. And uh, we're, we're going to have to go shoot Sherman tanks, too. I'm putting that yes. on the list. Sherman tanks, one of my favorite. I know a guy. I know yeah. a guy, too. Yeah. yeah, we can make this happen. You guys know the deal. Leave the comments below, and uh, you all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.